In this demonstration, we're going to look at logging using journal D. Now understand that newer Linux distributions that use the system D daemon will use typically the journal D daemon for logging. Older Linux systems that used init used the syslog daemon. Now the journal D daemon maintains a system log file called the journal. It's located in slash var slash log slash journal. And within this, we should see a subdirectory here that contains the actual journal file. Now in the old days when we were dealing with init and syslog, the log file was named messages and it was just a text file and you could view it with any text manipulation utility you wanted. You could view it with cat, less, head, tail, whatever it is you wanted to use. That's not the case with the journal. The journal is not a straight text file. You have to use a special command to view it. And that command is journal control. Now, if you enter the journal control command with no parameters, then just the entire journal is displayed. As you can see, it starts with the earliest entries and starts working its way through. And as you can see, there are a lot of entries. These entries are from about a month ago. I'm gonna press Q to get out. Now, just using the journal control command by itself is not very useful because of the fact that it displays the oldest entries first and you're trying to work down most likely to entries that occurred just recently. And if you've had a Linux system that's been up a long time, that could take quite a while to accomplish. So let's look at the man page for journal control. Now, if we page down here, two of the most useful options with journal control, in my opinion, are the dash R options and the dash F options. Let's look at dash R first. Notice here it tells us that it reverses the output, so the newest entries are displayed first. Well, that all of a sudden makes journal control a lot more useful because again, when I'm troubleshooting a system, most likely I want to see the most recent entries in the log file, not those from a month ago. So I enter journal control dash R and it goes in reverse order. So my most current entries are listed first and it starts working its way back as I page through the output. And by the way, I'm just pressing the space bar to move down a page at a time. Press Q to get out. Now remember there was also an option dash F that you can use. I love the dash F option. What this basically does is pull up the most recent entries in the journal and displays them on screen, but it doesn't exit out. And as new entries are added to the journal, as things happen on the system, those new entries are added to the bottom of the output. In the old days, we did this using the tail dash F command to view the var log messages file. And it's an excellent troubleshooting tool. Well, we can accomplish the same thing using journal control. We enter journal control dash F and notice that the most recent entries from the journal are displayed and then it continues listening for new entries to be added to the file. So let's go ahead over here and open up a new terminal window and let's create some journal entries. I'm first gonna switch to my root user account. Notice that as I did, new entries were added down here to the journal. Okay, and now let's say restart a service. System control, restart, and we have the MySQL database service running on the system. So let's restart MySQL D. Notice down here that as the service is stopped and restarted, entries were continuously added to the journal and we could view them here. So if I'm having problems on the system and I'm trying to troubleshoot what's going on, I can open up one terminal window and run journal control dash F in one and then do my troubleshooting over here. And then I can view the log messages as they're being added to the journal. Excellent troubleshooting tool. Okay, let's go ahead and exit out of here. And we will break out of journal control. Now, another neat feature with journal D is the fact that you can use it to view your system boot messages in addition to just your standard system log messages. And this can be useful if you're trying to troubleshoot boot issues. To do this, you enter journal control again, but this time enter dash B. When I do, the boot messages from the most recent system boot are displayed. You can see the most recent boot was at 12.33 in the afternoon today. Now. You can also use the journal control command to view messages from previous system boots as well. You do this by specifying a number with the dash B option. For example, if I wanted to display messages that were created during the first boot found at the very beginning of the journal, then I enter one here. 
Now, as you can see, the first boot events recorded in the journal occurred on August 19th. I believe that's when I installed this system. And here you can see those boot events. Enter Q to get out. Now, we can go the other direction as well. Instead of searching from the beginning of the journal, we can also start at the end of the journal and work our way backwards. Specifying dash B and then a negative number, such as negative 2, will look up the messages from the specified system boot starting from the end of the journal. For example, entering journal control dash B space negative 2, we see the system messages that were created two boots ago on September 9th. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Now, the journal control command can also be used to display only the log entries in the journal that are related to a specific service running on the system. The syntax is to enter journal control space dash u followed by the name of the service. As we said earlier, this system has the MySQL database service running on it. So we can use journal control to view just those messages related to the MySQL D daemon by entering dash u MySQL D. And here we see just those entries that are somehow related to just the MySQL database service running on the system. Now, the behavior of the journal D daemon is configured using a configuration file in the slash etsy directory. It's in slash etsy slash system D. Do an ls command, we should see the journal D.comp file. If you want to customize the way the journal D daemon works, this is the file that you edit. Let's go ahead and load it in the VI editor. Now, there are a lot of different parameters that you can configure in this file. Some of the more useful ones, in my opinion, are first of all, max file sec. This specifies the maximum amount of time to store entries in the journal file before you rotate and start a new journal file. Another one is max retention sec. This specifies the amount of time to store journal entries. Any entries older than the specified time will be automatically deleted from the journal file. And another one is this one right here, max level store. This controls the maximum log messages stored in the journal file. Basically, all messages that are equal to or less than the log file specified will be stored. Any messages created above the specified log level will be dropped. Now, by default, this is set to debug, so that means all log messages will be stored. Debug is the highest level and it goes down through info, notice, warning, error, crit, alert, and emerge. So if you wanted to reduce the number of log messages that are actually stored, you could set this to a value of, say, error. Then all warning, notice, and info messages would not be stored. They would be dropped. That's it for this demonstration. In this demo, we talked about working with journal D. We first looked at the location where the journal is stored in the file system. We then looked at using the journal control command to view the journal. And then we ended this demonstration by talking about how to configure the journal D daemon.